Israelites just witnessed their deliverance from the Egyptians. They heard the song of Moses and Miriam. All were celebrating. Sing to the Lord, for he is highly exalted. Both horse and driver he has hurled into the sea. Our study tonight is from the 15th chapter of Exodus, verses 22 to 27. I will be reading from the King, New King James Version. So Moses brought Israel from the Red Sea, then went out into the wilderness of Shur, and they went three days in the wilderness and found no water. Right after their deliverance, perhaps even during the first day, the Israelites were still ecstatic. Without water in the wilderness, traveling for day two, they probably have started to worry. But on the third day, let us see what the Israelites were like. Verse 23 of the 15th chapter of Exodus. Now when they came to Marah, they could not drink the waters of Marah, for they were bitter. Therefore, the name of it was called Mara. You see, repetition means that there is emphasis. 
bitter, 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 Mara bitter. In the life of Israelites during that time, for the first day, it was bitter because they were traveling. Second day, they still could not find any water. And even on the third day, however, when they finally found water, alas, it was not fit to drink. Much to their disgust, it was not good enough. Imagine traveling and wandering in the wilderness for three days without water, perhaps aggravated by, you know, the wailing of children and the complaining of the mothers. Then you come to a place, but then it was not suitable to drink. Verse 24. And the people complained against Moses, saying, What shall we drink? Understandably, after all that, you see, grumbling and murmuring and complaining after bitter experiences is kind of like expected. But as people of God, what do we do? You know, I remember the rattlesnake. Because apparently, if rattlesnakes are cornered, it sometimes can become so angry that it will bite itself. Bitterness, my dear sisters, is the same. It will not bite anyone but us. It will aggravate our life. We cannot move on. Everything comes back to us. Do you remember Proverbs 17.22? A merry heart does good like a medicine, but a broken spirit dries the bones. Subsequently, verse 25 tells us, So he, Moses, cried out to the Lord, and the Lord showed him a tree. When he cast it into the waters, the waters were made sweet. Moses cried out to the Lord. And God gave him his answer. Only a piece of wood, in fact, or a tree, a part of a tree. He cast it into the waters and then it was made sweet. That is what God does to us. Let us cry out to him and he will give us the answer and make our lives sweet. Verse That same verse. There he made a statute and an ordinance for them, and there he tested them. Verse 26, there is a command and a promise. And said, if you diligently heed the voice of the Lord your God and do what is right in his sight, give ear to his commandments and keep all his statutes, I will put None of the diseases on you which I have brought on the Egyptians, for I am the Lord who heals you. In every prom in every command, God gives us a promise. Isn't that amazing? He tells us what to do, but then he then gives us a promise to cling on to. Our loving God not only cured the waters in Mara, but he also promised healing to the Israelite nation. He too can cure our waters and he promises healing. Allow God to heal and ameliorate not only our diseases, but also heal us from our bitterness. He alone can sweeten our lives. Verse 27, then they came to Elim, where there were 12 wells of water and 70 palm trees, so they camped there by the waters. Other, other translation tells us that wells are, you know, com are coming from, it has, a, uh, it has a spring. So why 12? So there were 12 springs or 12 wells. Why springs? What is the significance? Springs 
our natural burst of living water. You see, 12, because there were 12 tribes of Israel. There were 12 tribes, there were 12 springs. Every single tribe of Israel was provided for in good measure. There was abundance. No tribe was left out. All were blessed. Seventy palm trees. Now in Genesis chapter 46. Tells us. Chapter 46 verse 26, verses 26 and 27. All the persons who went with Jacob in Egypt who came from his body, besides Jacob's son's wives, were 66 persons in all. And the sons of Joseph who were born to him in Egypt were two persons. All the persons of the house of Jacob who went to Egypt were 70. So 66 plus, ja uh, plus Jacob and Joseph and Joseph's two sons, there were 70. What is this? What is the significance of this? 70 palm trees? If there were 70, from the, uh, from the clan of Jacob, there were 70 direct descendants of Jacob. So there were 70 palm trees provided for the direct descendants of Jacob. 70 trees, palm trees mean, it symbolizes uh, victory. It also means shade, provision of rest. There is also growth of human population. You remember the promise that was given to Abraham? That he was his descendants were going to be innumerable. You see, palm trees also grow upward. Whatever you try to do to suppress it, it will always grow upward. I am reminded that God tells us, the people of God, if you stick by his commandments in his laws, he will make you grow upward. He who dwells in the oasis of the Lord, he will rise. She will rise. In my study, I found that Elim means, Elim, E-L, the, the letters E-L means tree or God. And the word Elim apparently means big tree or big God. Unlike Mara, e in Elim, there is nothing to tweak. In Elim, in, the, in our big God, there is nothing to tweak. He is enough. Unlike Mara, in Mara, the Israelites just traveled through. They passed by because you do not want to stay in bitterness. If you are there, you just pass by it. Leave the bitterness. And in Elim, you camp. You remember the Israelites just passed by Mara, but in Elim, they stayed. They camped. I am reminded of, you know, the, our prophecy books. There is no help for us but in God. We can be in peace only as we rest and wait for his salvation. It is the work of faith to rest in God, to feel however sorely tried, tried that our Father is at the helm. Our dear sisters, my dear sisters, are we tired and weary in our wilderness? Are we thirsty and but never satisfied because what we drink in, what we drink is actually bitter and it's not good and never enough? Come to Elim. Come to the big God. Stay and camp there and you will find rest and abundance in our big God. There is oasis. There is enough for everybody. And he will give us springs of living water 
in our big God, there is rest and abundance. Here is where you will stay. In God, we will stay.
Hey everyone, just wanted to encourage you to keep your head up, to stay positive and be blessed. And remember that Jesus is still the answer for the world today, for your world, for my world, for our world today. And he's got the whole world in his hands. Be blessed. Jesus is the answer for the world today. Above him there's no other Jesus is the way Jesus is the answer For the world today Above him there's no other Jesus is the way He is the answer He is the way Barbara. Hi. Thanks for joining us. I want to kind of start from the beginning. Okay. Tell me a bit about um, how you became an Adventist. Okay. Well, first of all, I'd just like to take this opportunity for thanking um, the powers that be um, for giving me this opportunity to share my experiences yeah. and what I have done over the past number of years. Um, so yes, I came and ad became an Adventist when I was about 16. Prior to that, I was a Catholic. The whole family were Catholics. Uh, I'm going to say staunch Catholic, if that means anything to anyone. Um, and I say staunch that we went to Mass every Sunday. We confessed our sins to the priest, as you do as a Catholic. I had my first communion and my confirmation um, and almost attended a Catholic school, secondary school. And then for some weird readers my mum met someone on the bus her name was called Sister Wedderburn some of you may know who she is and Sister Wedderburn started talking to her about um, the church and they would meet every Friday at the market oh, wow. and then yeah amazing and then she invited my mum to church and when she invited my mum to church we all went along because I was quite well I was a teenager at the time my brother was a little bit younger and um, we just miraculously just started having Bible studies and we really enjoyed going to church on Saturday. 
the only drawback for me was is that I was a dancer when I was younger, believe it or not, um, ballet and tap dancing. And a lot of my shows and exams were on a Saturday. So that was one thing that I had to, to sort of draw back and, in fact, stop doing because everything was on a Saturday that we did. Um, but it wasn't a problem to me because when I joined the church, there was lots of young people my age that made me feel so welcomed. Mm. Um, and I thought this God opened up an, another opportunity for me to be a part of a different community mm. and really, really thrived and th flourished Mm. being there um, and I've never looked back to be fair never looked back oh great and so you got involved in the church I did indeed I yes I did indeed and I noticed that the Seventh-day Adventist church was a church that involved young people in leadership and I thought wow it's amazing because if I compared it to my previous church we just went to church on a Sunday and came home and when I saw the involvement of young people, I was amazed. And I thought, wow, this is amazing. And I knew that we were in the right place. And that allowed me to expand as a person. And what I think was the biggest involvement that I had was in Pathfinders. Mm. I know that Pathfinders is such an amazing program for our, our world church, young people flourish. I love the word flourish because you do. Um, you learn so much. Um, you learn to be a leader, and I think that's where it came for me. I learned to be a leader through Pathfinders. Mm -hmm. And about 18, I started to pick up leadership roles. Um, I was youth leader at church. I went across to family life department. I went across to, um, uh, they used to call it lay activities in the olden days, but then they call it personal ministries. And I think I went around every single department within the church as a leader or an assistant leader. And I think that's how I grew and, mm. and had the excitement and wanted to do more and more and more. Mm. And that, for me, that's how, you know, it's brought me to where I am today. And I even say that when I went to university, I used to go up there and was able to just talk in front of all these people. And they would say, how do you do that? And I thought it's my training in Pathfinders. It was my training. You know, Pathfinders is such a wonderful program that we have. And I thank God that I am a part of this church. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. And even when you look at your journey, you can see um, by the time you're, you're, you're 20, you look back and you can see your growth so much so that you can even see as you're going into the, the workplace. So you came as a teenager, you developed, you had a lot of leadership skills developing as you were getting um, older as well. Mm. And that led you to um, something bigger. Tell us about that. I, I started my leadership outside of my local church, like, for example, the Federation. I became music chair. I became evangelistic chair. I became the president at one stage. So, you know, it grew. My, my, my ability to to be a leader grew within the church mm -hmm. however outside of that um in my 30s I decided no that's not true not in my <laughs> 30s it was well later on but I was doing lots of other work mm -hmm. um, in my professional life mm -hmm. but about 15 to 20 years ago I decided that I wanted to do something on more of an outreach basis yeah. And a friend of mine sat down and we formed a, a group called uh, Mums in Action. Some of you may know or have heard of Mums in Action. Mums in Action started off doing um, fun days um, for our local community where we'd invite hundreds of that hundreds and hundreds of people within our community to get together and on a cultural basis. We then also started doing um, um so that was fun days. And then we started doing um, summer schools for young children, disadvantaged young children within our community. And these were children that were on the borderline of all sorts, um, didn't have much money. So it was free. Everything we provided was free. We got funding and it was all free. And we'd run this two weeks at a time and it would have a theme. So one year we did a theme on music. One year we did a theme on sports. Um, one year we did a theme on arts and crafts and we rotated that and the children loved it every year for two weeks of the year during the school holidays we will 
organised this fabulous summer school. And we used to get lots of volunteers coming along and helping us. And at the end of it, what was so lovely, the children would uh, perform for their parents and their friends in a, like a concert. So they'd be singing and they'd be dancing, um, uh, doing poetry, you name it, and they would do it. And it was such a lovely thing to do for our local community. Mm. When we did that, um, we graduated on to something called uh, Kids Praise. And some of you may know about Kids Praise. It's something we've held for the last seven years, mm. um, where we get kids within our church now to perform um, whatever they want to showcase and we have a mass choir usually of about 250 children from around the um the south england conference and they will perform on a stage in front of parents um family and friends and have a great time and it's and it was a way of allowing children to show what they can do for god mm. in whatever they felt comfortable doing and that could be song dance mime singing uh, musical instruments mm. um, and also five years ago we started um, the mother's prayer conference now the reason why I started the mother's prayer conference was because I realized that mothers there were lots of mothers that I was in contact with that were struggling with their children and I say struggling in the sense that there were children were being torn from one direction to another and sometimes mm. in directions that mothers were just so anxious and worried about for their young for their children mm. and I said you know what we need to do we need to pray for our children mm. so we got mothers together to pray for our children mm. and the first year we did this we had like over 400 mothers attend this conference we did that for a couple of years and then someone said to me well what about the fathers why don't we get fathers involved in this as well so I said mm. yeah, why not and we added fathers and mm. again we kind of doubled our numbers yeah. Um, the fathers came along, they were praying for their children, this it was a weekend, um, prayed for their children, and, you know, it just grew from year to year. However, this year, we decided to do something a little bit different, different. and that was because of COVID. Um, I had lots of messages from mothers in particular who were concerned about their children returning to school um, in September yeah. um, due to COVID, and whether they'd be safe and we, real, real worries they had. And I said, you know what, Lord, we need to do something. And what, I, what we decided to do as a team was bring together mothers, fathers, sons and daughters. And again, this is an opportunity for mothers, fathers and children to come together to pray and ask for protection for them to return to school. And the marvellous thing about this, COVID has brought us together we did this program virtually. Mm. Now, on an ordinary year, we would get maybe 600 people attend. And we were surprised to know that this program went worldwide. When I say worldwide, we had over 2,000 people watching mm. the program from countries like Botswana, the United States, um, Kenya, all over the world. We were so amazed. And we just thank God that we were able to reach so many people across the world, across the globe with this program. And, you know, the program will grow from strength to strength because I believe that mothers and fathers need to continue praying for their children because this world is not our home. We are just passing through. But our children are in the thick of this horrible world that we live in and we need to pray for our children. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I just thank God that we were able to, to bring this program together. Yeah. yeah. So tell us about um, the charity a bit more. OK, so I um, co-own a charity called Hope Charity and Hope Charity is about making the difference within our community. Um, it's not a Christian organisation, but it's run by Christians like myself um, and our trustees are Christians. Um, and what we try to do, we try to educate um, people within the community and we offer courses and they are free. We offer courses such as parenting courses, parenting mm. tips, because we know that, again, um, I like to highlight children, how it's important that children need a good foundation as they grow. Mm. Um, and it's for us as parents to guide our children in the right path. Mm. So we offer parenting um, uh, training. We also mm. offer back to work so those people that have been unemployed for a while we offer support in back to work you know how to write a cv how to um 
uh, uh, conduct an interview, just mm. practical help and advice. Mm. Um, we also signpost because sometimes we can't always do the things that people come in to us to ask for. So we signpost people and we do a little bit of life coaching as well. So if people are in the middle of the road and they actually don't know which direction to go in due to because maybe um, finances, lost, they've lost their jobs or they've been made redundant for whatever reason, we try and help them with a bit of life coaching to coach them back into a new path or coach them back in trying to get um, new employment. Mm. Um, so that's our charity and it's called Hope Charity. If anyone's interested in supporting Hope Charity, please do get in touch as well because um, we are making a difference also within our local community. Um, What's next? What's next? Good for you. Well, actually, a little bit of a promo. We've got um, a Kids Praise Christmas coming up in December. So if anyone's interested in their children wanting to take part in a virtual Kids Praise Christmas, um, just get in touch with me. But what's next? I mean, what I just want to continue as long as God gives me the strength um, and the inspiration, because you need to be inspired yes. um, by his Holy Spirit. I just want to be able to now... I'm coming to the age now where I think it's time for me to hand over the baton. Yeah, yeah. And fortunately, we are able to hand and have younger people join our committee so we can eventually hand that baton over to them. No. Um, so it's about mentoring. It's all about mentoring. So, you know, allowing other young people now to take the baton and run with it, really, in whichever direction like, they're, they're yeah, like, like you did when you were younger. Yeah, when you were. Yeah. Now you say it's um, children. What age are you think? Were you thinking of children? Well, the, for the kids' praise, we start anything from the three up until teens. Okay. So um, if you've got a very talented three-year-old, um, please do get in touch. Um, and we have a, a number of teenagers also taking part. So it's ranging from anything from um, three years old to eighteen, nineteen. That's for Kids Praise? Yeah, that's for Kids Praise, which is on the 12th of December this year, 2020. So do get in touch if you want your children to take part. It's a fabulous programme. And it also allows our children to grow, grow spiritually and show that, look, this is what I'm doing for Christ. Yes, absolutely. Well, everybody's heard, so I hope, well, you're going to be inundated. I hope so. <laughs> um, how do they contact you? Yeah, well, you can contact me um, either via um, the Family Ministries Department at the SEC yeah. or uh, my telephone number. Yes, e either or, either or. Right. So, well, we look forward to that. I will certainly like to get involved in that, um, even if I'm just being nosy and watching. <laughs> That's fine. Um, Barbara, I'd really like to thank you for coming. And what you've done is something fantastic. Um and I know that ladies are going to be inspired listening to that. I'm inspired listening to it. Others can hear now and get in contact with you at the conference, well, through the conference. But thanks again. Well, thank you very much. Much appreciated. Thank you. You said you'll never leave me la, 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 No, you said me la, 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 You were always there la, 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 Just to come la, 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 You said every time la, I need you la, 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 I can call on you la, 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 You will carry me through la, la,
Father, I ask thee, teach me your will. While you are working, help me be still. For Satan is busy, but God is real. Order my steps in your word. Please order my steps. charge of my thoughts both day and night please order my steps in your word please order my steps in your word I want to walk worthy, to walk worthy. I want my calling to fulfill please order We would like to acknowledge the following 30 women for their hard and dedicated, excellent work and service to the Lord throughout the North England Conference. Their names are Grace Walsh, Winsome Barges, Sue Anscombe, Miranda Roberts, Florence Manji, Lorraine MacDonald, Chelsea Smith, Cheryl Banton, Jean Gregory, Zane Simpson, Sylvia Thompson, Ruth, Ruthlyn South, Gloria Phillips, Camila Warner, Faith Moyo, Joy Thompson, Leslie Noakes, Wendy Watson Teague, Martha Banda, Angela Walters, Rudo Chengeta, L Lenora Tullock, Diamond 
Sathe or Seth, forgive me, Kathy Senesi, Joanna Daniels, uh, Sharon Campbell, Marva Hyatt, John Saunders, Penina Kagore, and Anna Ray. God bless you all, and thank you for the service and the ministry across the North England Conference. this time it is my pleasure to thank God from whom all blessings flow for the wonderful time that we've had. I want to thank everybody online that has joined us. We really appreciate you spending your time with us and we hope that you have been blessed. I want to thank Sister Sharon Platt MacDonald, the BUC Women's Ministries Director, who has been a wonderful support and guide as we have planned and delivered this program. I want to thank Pastor Jackson, our president, and his wife, Angela, for being with us and for joining us and supporting us as they always have throughout the, the years. I want to thank Pastor Hush, our executive secretary, for also stepping in at many times to support us and to direct us. I want to thank Jacqueline Otokpa, a very good sister who has now become a friend our SEC Women's Ministries Director, we have built a wonderful relationship through learning together and planning together. I want to thank Sister Geraldine Farmer, our former Women's Ministries Director here at the North England Conference for supporting us and coming back to share highlights with us and to sing for us. It has been wonderful to hear her. And to thank Sister Faith Moima for her prayers and support of the Women's Ministries. Thank the women on the videos, um, Joanna, Kathy, Faith, Miranda and Ruth. And thank the singers who have sang for us so well. And one very special thank you to the communications team at the North England Conference and the South England Conference for all the patience that they've had in supporting us all the way. And so with those thanks, we want to know that God has been with us and we want to thank him again and continue to do the work in the, in the women's ministry department and may all be according to God's will. We thank you, amen. I dreamed of a city called glory so bright So fair as I enter the gate, I cried, Holy, the angels all met me there. They carried me from mansions to mansions and all oh, the sights I saw. But I said, I want to.
as I enter the gates of that city, my loved ones all knew me well. They took me down the streets of heaven. The signs are too many to tell. So, Abraham, Jacob, Spoke with Mark and Timothy, but I said I want to see Jesus, cause he's the one. Ladies, we have come to the end of our journey. We have come, we have been blessed, we have been informed, and we have been inspired by our week-long presentations from various parts of the world. However, in Ecclesiastes, it tells us, um, chapter 3 to be precise, for everything there is a season and a time for every mother under the sun. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to pluck up. Today is the time to say goodbye but not for too long because soon and very soon our Heavenly Father will burst the clouds in His glory to take us home with Him. So, the Lord bless and keep you. The Lord make His face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up 
his countenance upon you and give you peace in this time that we are living in. Also, I would like to leave with you Ephesians 6.10. Be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. Jeremiah 29.11. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans of welfare and not for evil. And to give you a future and a hope. Your future may look bleak here on this earth. But we are bound for heaven. And there in heaven, as we continue traveling along, our aim is to get to heaven. Once we live for Christ, once we journey with him, beside us once we have him within us in our hearts to lead us on this pathway of life your reward will soon and soon very soon you will be able to have your reward which is a place in the lord's kingdom so thank you for coming thank you for supporting all the programs I would like to especially thank my team, those who have worked tirelessly alongside me in preparing this program. Also, I would like to thank those that have prayed with us. We have fasted and prayed for 10 days. I would like to thank you ladies, waking up 5.30 every morning to do your morning prayers, even though you have your family. You know, so thank you. Also, I would like to thank um, those behind the scene, especially those uh, camera persons. You know, this is the new way of life. Um, everything needs to be filmed to be able to be broadcast on, um, you know, virtually broadcast. So I just would like to thank the team as well for their prayers and their words of encouragement when it was really a bit overwhelming, but my team was there to support me. Thank you. And if I have forgotten anyone else, I just want to say for the un unnamed person at the moment, thank you. And may God bless you, keep you, keep traveling with Christ, keep looking up, keep pressing forward, don't look back. Don't look left. Don't look right. Look forward because soon and very soon, our King will return in His glory to take us home. So, until then, may God bless and keep you. It was William Arthur Ward who said this, feeling gratitude and not expressing it is like wrapping a present and not giving it. Today we want to wrap our present and give it to those who have enhanced the journey this week. First of all, I'd like to give thanks to God for bringing us thus far. He's leading in our past, he's dealing in the present and he's leading for our future. I'd want to 
say thank you to the South England Conference and to Elder Jacqueline Atokpa, our Women's Ministry Leader in the SEC, for hosting this event. I want to thank uh, Beula Plunkett, our NEC Women's Ministries Director, for her contribution. And then we turn to the missions in Scotland. Uh, Magrath uh, Mikisa, we thank you for all that you have done. And then in the Welsh mission to Samantha Fessel for her contribution. And over in the Irish mission, Lini Ann Cooper. We want to say thank you to all the presidents and those who have enabled us to come this far. And you know, prolific writer Ellen G. White reminds us, we have nothing to fear for the future, except we forget the way the Lord has led us and his dealing in our past experience. And so that we might never forget, marking the milestones of our journey with God helps to keep us looking up to him, encouraged by his leadership to face the future with hope. As we culminate this week of celebrating the 25 years of women's ministry, I pray that you will realize that God has filled your life with purpose. You know, each day brings a fresh opportunity to approach God in faith as you allow him to move you forward into the future he has for you. May you embrace the assurance of Philippians 4 verse 13 believing that you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you as you live to accomplish all that God has ordained for you. So reach high and reach far, for to reach is to hope, and to hope is to aspire, and to aspire is to become all that God has intended for you, your church, your family and your community. And finally... Know that whatever has transpired in your past experience, whatever your current circumstances, whatever the future holds, God gives healing for yesterday, help for today and hope for tomorrow. I charge you then to move forward with confidence into all your tomorrows, for God is already there. Amen.